Though Genji is good again, which is kind of weird, right? I mean, he didn't get any buffs. We've seen the tank passive, which reduces ult charge gain from shooting tanks by 50%. That nerfs his blade bot style. And at the end of Overwatch 1, that was the best way to play him. You farm up that blade as quickly as possible. So what gives? I mean, people are saying he's the best. We can look at Stylos's tier list here. We can see, oh yeah, there's Genji right at the top. We can jump over to Custa's Genji over in A tier. Re or Jaws can show us Genji up in that best must play tier. We can look at an aggregated list. Yeah, Genji up there in that good solid tier there. So how did this happen? Was it just that removing Briggs Bash and Cassidy's flashbang was enough and he's just wild and unstoppable now? Well, that's that's part of it, but there's actually more to it. What we're also seeing is Genji has always had competition in his diver role with a couple other heroes. Specifically, those heroes are Tracer, Sombra, and Echo. And two of those heroes got nerfs. So Tracer now does less damage, and Echo saw some nerfs in terms of her focusing beam does less damage, and her duplicate isn't as powerful of an ult. It caps out at 300 health. So those are some interesting things that happened. So he didn't get stronger. In fact, his blade bot playstyle farm for his ult, neutral characters, strong neutral characters should be stronger than strong ult characters in Overwatch 2 with that nerf. Uh, that would suggest that, oh hey, we've actually controlled power creep pretty reasonably. If Genji's a good hero going into Overwatch 2, and he's a good hero in that environment, that would suggest that power creep was pretty well controlled, which is great news as far as I'm concerned, and a bit unusual heading into a new title like that. Now, don't get me wrong, if you're a support, you're still going to have a rough time. You definitely benefit if you're kind of at the middle or low levels of the ladder at practicing your 90 degree turns, your 180 degree turns, and specifically your upward flicks when you do that. So you go, hey, bring that arrow up and flick, bring that arrow up and flick. When you're looking for that Genji that's double jumping in your face, hint, he's either behind you and a little bit above, or to your left and right and a little bit above. That's that's where they live when they're doing that, at least on the middle of the ladder. So be aware of that. You're also going to want to remember, hey, you want to force out the deflect. The duel's not over until you've dealt with that. Don't change your sleep dart, your five orb, your sticky bomb into him until you've done those things. But yeah, this is kind of interesting. So what do you guys think? Are you looking at this and going, oh, Genji, looking forward to playing some Genji again? Or, hey, Genji, he's always been such a pain. He's so much more frustrating to play against than Tracer. That's a common thing I've found in a lot of people I've coached because they like flicking back and forth, left and right a little more, as opposed to the up. It takes people getting a little bit more familiar with their mouse control to fight Genji. I expect there to be some, so, to be some complaints. I expect people to not particularly like fighting him. On the other hand, if he's good and they nerfed his playstyle, that suggests that again, power creep didn't really happen, which is pretty cool news for a game that did a bunch of reworks, added a new hero, all those things. So let me know what you think in the comments down below. If you're enjoying the content, please drop a like, consider subscribing if you haven't already done so, and uh, that's gonna do it. Thanks, Temporal Out.